Welcome back. Even as the scientists here at the University of Nebraska work on bringing advanced surgical techniques to outer space, many back down here on Earth don't even have the most basic of services. Well now, a company in San Francisco is bringing state-of-the-art communications to rural Uganda. <laughs> It's easy to see why Uganda is, as Winston Churchill so vividly described a century ago, the Pearl of Africa. From rolling hills to scenic valleys and, of course, plenty of sunshine. But despite the outward beauty, Uganda remains largely underdeveloped. Unemployment is high, illiteracy even higher. Many in rural settings live simple lives as farmers, growing bananas, the country's staple food, for personal consumption. James Chalimpa's family has been in the banana business for generations. But unlike his ancestors, Chalimpa's finding he can now improve his banana crop by growing bigger, tastier bananas. It all began two years ago with the introduction of these solar panels in the town of Fort Portal in western Uganda. The country's power grid is notoriously unreliable, especially in rural villages outside the main cities. For decades, maybe even centuries, farmers here were content to live a subsistence lifestyle, growing food crops for just personal consumption. But thanks to the presence of solar energy to power, among other things, the internet in such remote corners of the globe, the digital divide is fast closing and lifestyles here fast improving. The solar panels may not be able to provide constant electricity, but they're able to power everything from telephones to desktop computers in Chalimpa's simple mud hut. And with a desktop comes internet service facilities where he can dial up and get, among other things, better methods of improving his farming techniques. For us, it has helped me, uh, me to, to get information through ICT. And uh, now we are getting market for my, my production. Then I, when I put the internet, I can see where the market, my talk, where it is and other, 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 uh, other fruits and so, and so on, so I'm benefiting. The desktop computer is linked to this Internet Communications and Technology Service Center, appropriately named Reflect, a solar-powered rural-based ICT center run by William Grace Maiso. Uh, they miss it most. Maiso had an idea several years ago to empower what he called his disenfranchised villagers by providing a place where everyone could come and get access to information technology, home improvement, and general education. He sought funds from a San Francisco-based company, Invenio, who provided the technology, and the non-governmental organization ActionAid, which provided the solar panels. And the rest, as they say, is history. What we are now trying to achieve is computer literacy and also to satisfy community needs, needs that are arising out of what we've introduced. So far, Maiso's project has been able to power four of the dozens of villages in this area. It may be slow going, but he proudly says the impact is being felt far and wide. Every day, villagers flock to his center to access the World Wide Web. Many of these women don't even know how to type, but Maiso and his tiny staff patiently walk them through the basics until they are satisfied they can navigate on their own. And he says it's encouraging previously disadvantaged groups to have a voice. We have 87 HIV positive women who have come together, they have fought stigma, and the reason they have done that is because they have realized that they can share through the different ICTs. The bottom line, Maiso says, is that this simple technology has changed the way people here live and work. Previously, there was a computer phobia, but we have done a lot of awareness raising. People are now aware that computers are not only ICTs, 
and computers are not only for those who have gone to school. Maiso's wish is to link huts like this one in the rural countryside to his center some five miles away. And because village after village has been powered by solar here, it makes it easier for a signal to be relayed from one booster antenna to another all the way up to remote mountain villages like this. To many of these children, computers used to be a foreign concept. No more, thanks to Reflect. Free training for young minds eager to learn. We've seen young children and the elderly learn a computer to access information, which is vital to them. The children seek information on rights to education, sponsorship opportunities, and things to do with the HIV AIDS. But as practical as this looks, the facilities are equally difficult to maintain. At nearly $2,000 a piece, the solar panels are costly for meager rural budgets. The biggest setback is the sustainability of the project. You know, after the piloting period of three years, we don't know what will happen after one or two years from now. But don't tell that to these computer programmers of tomorrow. With one simple piece of equipment, they are able to spring forward into the 21st century and have access to the same technology as children around the world. Jeff Koinengi for Global Challenges, Fort Portal in Western Uganda. Thanks for joining us here at the University of Nebraska. I'm Shia Britansi for Global Challenges. See you next time.